This is a Heathkit IG72 function generator, and this one was sent to me by Andrew, who uh, uh, goes under the name Night Train on the uh, Shovelhead forum. It's an antique motorcycle forum that I'm a member of, and he sent it to me for the cost of shipping, and he had received it from somebody whose uh, father had passed away, and he had actually got a couple of pieces, and he sent me a few. Uh, we're only discussing this particular one. And it arrived in, in, in relatively good cosmetic condition. Uh, I haven't done anything to it. So you can see that, you know, obviously some of the knobs are wrong. The case is in, is in good condition. Uh, obviously dirty, still has the original handle on it. Uh, very little scuff marks. I, I mean, fine condition indeed, right? Uh, a couple of things to notice on here is somebody put a toggle switch in and, and usually I go absolutely nuts when I see uh, 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 modifications made to uh, to Heathkit equipment, you know, especially stuff in in my collection. This one was was done extremely tastefully though and stuff like this, you really small toggle switches are very easy to cover up or repair because you could actually remove them if you need to and put a standard Heathkit screw in. I'm going to talk about this switch a little bit later though. I'm going to come back to this, okay? So this screen, uh, these scratches are superficial and can be buffed out just like they were with the with the impedance bridge. Uh, the original knobs right here, these two are, are not original. This one is, right? So these could be replaced. Not No, no big deal. <clears throat> uh, looking inside, uh, there is some damage that happened during shipping. Um, or not during shipping or that happened and and I noticed this from shipping is the the power transformer Is not connected to the unit and this thing uh, flopped around and and knocked this 6AU6 over Which may or may not be damaged uh, If if the tube is damaged, it's not a big deal. These are these are not hard to come by. It's It's nothing really um, uh, Hopefully this is okay. This is this is the primary winding so I'm not overly concerned. I will test this uh, bolt this back in and this also secures uh, some capacitors on the other side that were dangling on the bottom uh, Those caps are wax caps. They'd be replaced anyway. It wouldn't even be an issue uh, As for this side the uh, all the capa this uh, transformer has to do is bump into this uh, This cap here, which it it looks like it did, you know, give it a good run for its money and knock it loose uh, These caps I save only for cosmetic purposes obviously anyway if this thing were damaged, uh, it would only be uh, worked on just to tighten it back down on the bottom, but would not actually be used in circuit because this is already uh, past its life expectancy. So this doesn't actually matter uh, anymore. Uh, other than that, this would probably just be a, a recap job. Uh, the checking of, of some resistors here to make sure they're in tolerance. Uh, the checking of uh, some um, capacitors and resistors that may be precision. And then obviously the the final waveform. So I'm gonna lift this up here so we can have a look on the underside. Uh, here is the underside. A very impressive, very impressive 20 watt 5k resistor right here. Uh, I, I imagine this is stock. Um, even if whether it was or wasn't, still very impressive indeed. That that thing has got to blow a lot of heat. And we could see that this is is hanging in the air uh, this has become detached uh, there is no manual online that I know of for this luckily there is a schematic uh, it's not a big deal this is one of the capacitors that would be replaced this is garbage uh, another one here is also garbage uh, I, I imagine that this with these two holes here may have been mounted um, where that transformer was uh, and no longer is. I'm, I'm just guessing here, but uh, I imagine these weren't free floating like like they were. This was probably seated down here somewhere. Uh, this light bulb was probably used in some current limiting application and didn't actually light up. Uh, it's a part of the part of the circuit here. Um, <clears throat> also seeing down here, this is uh, a little bit alarming. But I will I will refer to the documentation before I pass judgment. These look like diodes. I may be wrong again, but I'm seeing they look like diodes over here. I will take a look and see why are there diodes strung across here. Uh, maybe the rectifier was removed. I don't know. I see one, two, three tubes. I see three tubes populated. 
uh, one for show, who knows? So we'll figure it out. We'll check the schematic, we'll see what's up with that. This is just a, a brief inspection of the unit, that's all. But we gotta say, you know, right here we're seeing some 1% uh, precision resistors. So obviously that's, that is something right there. So these resistors are gonna have to be looked at and make sure they're within 1%. Uh, I'm not overly concerned for this particular unit uh, as long as they're close to specification, it's supposed to just be generating a, a sine wave. And if we're not concerned about the particular height, you know, that switch is, um, this is, this is the cycle switch. So this is uh, supposed to be, uh, yeah, I guess that, that one would actually be uh, pretty relevant. So that'd be something we'd want to look at. I went online and printed out a schematic for this unit as it should originally be set up. Also, while I was online, I found out that a lot of people made a lot of modifications to this particular model, and it had to do with stability. I uh, also want to point out that uh, this is actually correct, this 20-watt, 5,000-ohm uh, resistor. And I haven't helped me if this thing actually pulls 20 watts, because this would be absolutely the single worst circuit design I've ever seen if, if something actually has a 20-watt resistor in it. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even imagine I'd be sick. Um be able to find where this cable goes not that it's particularly important uh this down here i am not i'm not seeing these these look like diodes and and i'm starting to think that as part of this uh little stability crusade that this is wired in possibly to replace the rectifier as a solid solid state rectifier as part of a, a stability increase what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna quickly work these wires back and see where they go I say wires, and, and I should be saying wire, because, you know, we see one, this is obviously supposed to be here, and we see one uh, branching off here, and then, and then coming through this 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 toggle switch up front, and, and this extra wire is coming down, and this wire may have actually come straight off of here, if not for this switch. So this is going to be a little a little harder to, to understand. Uh, it's not going to be as obvious as, as I would like to believe. I figured now would be a good time as any to secure this uh, transformer back into place. I've, I've done so. Uh, these two screws are now secure. This thing's not going anywhere. I've taken this uh, uh, 6AU6. I've, I've straightened these pins out uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, at this point, this this tube should now go back in the socket. It, it would go back in. It would sit in there fine if I placed it in. Um, does it work? I don't know. I'm going to have to put on the tube tester. I don't know what kind of beating that thing took. Uh, this may be the end of this. Uh, we'll find out. Um, this right here, I'm going to take a look at right quick and, and see if this could be uh, uh, tightened down. And look on the other side. So these diodes appear to be correct. Uh, they are a part of the uh, the meter control. I, I don't know if they're period correct. These diodes may have been replaced at some point, and, and they could be period correct. I just, I just don't know. But uh, it, it's in accordance with the schematic, uh, they're here. And, and I trace them out, and, and they are correct. Uh, these di diodes are good. I've also taken uh, this um, a capacitor that was um, that was disconnected, and I've and I've resoldered it back to the the six AU six, which would seem funny since I'm going to remove it. But I wanted to have this uh, everything back to where it's supposed to be before I take everything apart. You know. Especially since I don't have manual, only the schematic. I like to keep everything exactly how it should be. You know, this is an inspection. If I find something wrong, I fix it. This um, this capacitor, this can that, that obviously won't be used anymore, but it's just cosmetic, has been tightened down. It doesn't wiggle anymore. I did that by, by twisting these. That, that got beaten up by the, the power transformer, you know, that's been fixed. But but it knocked knocked the hell out of this. So these these have been torqued down. That's fixed. Um, Got to test out the light bulb. Uh, then comes the uh, obviously the arduous process of of checking all of these components, the diodes, the the resistors, all these resistors. These are these are right here are one percent resistors. Um, this light bulb, which is a uh, three watt one fifteen, um, this monster here that uh, we spoke about earlier. These pots. Just a lot of nitty gritty uh, testing to do, some tube testing and what have you, you know. But this is the inspection. This is this is not any of that. So we'll go back top side and look at some other stuff now that this is uh, all been corrected on the bottom. 
There's also a multiplier portion here, and this multiplier portion has some capacitors. And they are uh, uh, plus or minus uh, 5%, or plus or minus 2%, it looks like. I doubt that. But, um, you know, we'll see what we get out of this when we when we measure it. You know, the proof is in the pudding. And uh, obviously, we, since this is an analog meter, we have to measure the deflection on that as well. All sorts of fun stuff to do with something like this. But um, we also have two pots here. Uh, again, I'll, I'll assume that, that, that both of these are, are original. They, they look original. Uh, the schematic shows, I could see uh, definitely uh, there's an output control pot here, right? And a, and a meter control so that's that that accounts for two pots uh right there um so that would be them and then we have uh, everything up front so it seems like the the you know i i, I recant what i said earlier the uh it's pretty much original except for this switch which uh um changes the resistance of of a circuit slightly a circuit that I'll obviously get into. It'd probably be a, a separate video talking about the modification, how it affects it. And I'm gonna leave it in place for now because we're, obviously we're gonna see what it does. It doesn't seem to affect this, uh, you know, in, in a terrible way. You know, when I have an understanding about what this does, this is obviously, you know, trying to look here. This is the 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 decibel or, or volt uh, of the of the waveform right and this is probably some sort of you know in between those to to do something and then this does something else i know it sounds pretty stupid the way i'm saying this but you know i really don't have an understanding yet but somewhere within that you know turning of this knob there is an there is an extra change in value that is uh, changed or exacerbated by uh flipping that switch on and off right and through here so don't know yet. Going to find out, but I'm going to make an exception to policy here, and I'm going to restore it with the mod in place. And we're going to find out what that mod does, because we're going to put it on the oscilloscope, obviously, and we're going to take some measurements when this is done. But I am going to have to order some, some electrolytics for this. Obviously, we're not going to be able to fire it up in this condition. It just wouldn't be safe, and it wouldn't be worth ruining some mullard valves over. So that's what we're going to have to do. I was curious to quickly test all of these uh, 1% resistors right here, and all of them were actually well within specification of 1%, except this one 100K resistor uh, right here that measured 119K. So that one will have to go. That's off by 20%. Everything else, perfect. So, yeah, not bad. I'll just throw that one on the list. That's an easy repair. Uh, the other ones are actually of gold standard, believe it or not. If you, you look within this unit, you'll see these are all uh, gold. These are our 5% tolerance resistors all around. Uh, I don't know if uh, Heath Kid had a good week that week or something, or if this kit really calls for 5% uh, tolerance resistors everywhere. Uh, seems rather strange, even in the, um, well, not in the power supply. There's silver in the power supply. But yeah, so... They'll have to be tested too. And you can see up here for the uh, for the uh, meter, they're they're not gold, they're silver. But all down here, this is all gold, so gold band. Have to take a look at those as well. I'm getting ahead of myself though. The the point is, uh, this would be a cool candidate for restoration. You know, uh, the fact that it also has a, a 600 uh, ohm uh, matching impedance load would be pretty cool. If you look at the uh, 331 alpha over here. This one also expects a 600 ohm uh, impedance. The um, the Dynaco stuff, whoop, bumped into the lamp there, the Dynaco stuff also expects 600 ohm impedance input. So so this is this would be nice. You know, the field tech, it's, it's, it's garbage. Uh, field tech may actually outperform this uh, with regard to sine wave because it's much newer, but this is Heath Kit, so, so we're going to roll with this. So stay tuned for more movies as we go and restore this, the IG-72 audio generator from Keith Thick. So stay tuned as we restore this, the audio generator model IG-72 from Heathkit. Thanks for watching.